Hi, I'm Charlie Knott and I'm a filmmaker and today I'll be covering the filmmaker's tools. Some of you guys will be using your phones or your tablets to shoot the movie, so this information about exposure and lenses won't really apply, but I just wanted to show you the filmmaker's tools so you know. When you're holding your camera or have it mounted on a tripod, you'll notice there's a circular cap on the front of the lens. This is called the lens cap. It's there to protect your camera's sensor and inner mechanics so you won't damage it to scratches or dust particles. You could also burn out the sensor of your camera by exposing it to sunlight, so it's best to keep the lens cap on when you're not using the camera. You can't take videos with just the camera body. You'll need a lens. All lenses come with a lens mount that attaches to the camera body. Now with the camera mounted on the lens, it's best to go over f-stop and aperture. Now at this point you should have a lens selected. Nicer lenses will have the ability for you to control your exposure of your video through what's called an aperture or your f-stop. And some lenses won't even zoom in and out, forcing you to have to back your camera in and get closer or wider. Lenses like these have a fixed focal length and are determined in millimeters. For example, a 35 millimeter lens is wider than a 50 millimeter lens. The higher the number, the closer the image is going to be. Whereas the smaller the number, the wider it's going to be. You can even experiment with wide angle lenses to create a fisheye or GoPro look to your video. One aspect of movie making is the exposure of your image. Making sure that your video doesn't look too bright or dark is called properly balancing your exposure. You can do this through several ways depending on what camera you have. In my camera, you can control this through the ring around my lens called the aperture ring. You'll know if your camera has this when you see numbers around your lens ranging from a low value to a higher value. These numbers are called f-stops. An example of this on my lens shows my aperture, or f-stop, going from a 2.8 to even 16. Turning the aperture ring to these different numbers makes the image lighter or darker. Let's test something out. If I stop back down to a 2.8, and I put my hand right in front of the camera as a focus test, and let's focus on my hand. Notice how the background is blurry, but my hand is in focus. That can often help to isolate your background and focus your subject matter more successfully. So you may notice that my camera looks different than your camera. This is because I'm using a digital cinema camera that I've rigged up for my purposes as a filmmaker. So for example, what's this box right here? This is a large monitor that I've mounted via an HDMI cord to my camera so I can see a video out signal of my image instead of a smaller image on my camera screen. You also notice that I have these wooden handles on the side. This is so that if I wanted to, I could actually go handheld with this. See? I could actually focus and go handheld with the, while holding it on the wooden handle. One of the most important tools I have is my tripod. It keeps my shot stable and steady. And some tripods even come with what's called a fluid head that will allow you to actually um, do specific slower pans or if I wanted to I could do a quicker pan based off the tension that I apply to it. Now you may also notice that if your tripod has what's called a ball head you can unscrew it from the bottom and readjust your camera your tripod angle. Here I've changed cameras so we can talk about a zoom lens. So the three main parts about a zoom lens are zoom range focus, and aperture. So in a zoom lens, like any lens, the focus ring adjusted the sharpness or blurriness of the lens. And with the zoom lens specifically, you can adjust the focal length. So I could say go from a wider, ang wider a range to a closer up range. Like most lenses, a zoom lens has an aperture ring. The aperture controls the amount of light that passes through the lens. Now that you've got your lens mounted on your camera and you're properly exposed for your scene, you may want to film someone. It's always best to ask that person if they feel comfortable being filmed before you go ahead and record. If that person was comfortable being filmed, you can ask them to sit or stand in front of where you'd like the background to be. But, if they, but what if they look blurry? If this happens, all you need to do is focus the lens on your subject. And make sure your exposure is right by setting the right f-stop. So we're a little, little overexposed here. So we're going to set the f-stop down to say, like a four or five point six. So four looks right. Your focus ring can be found anywhere close to the front of the edge of the lens. So let's check our focus again. 
Yeah, we're in focus. A quick tip about focusing is if you set your f-stop to a lower value such as 4 or 5.6, you can achieve a background that's out of focus while keeping your subject in focus. This helps to center the image on what's most important in your shot while keeping distractions in the background out of focus. Once your subject is in focus and the frame is set, you're all ready to record. Just remember to hit the camera's record button once to start the video, and when you want the shot to be over, just hit the record button again to stop the recording. Another aspect of movie making includes shooting on a tripod so your shot isn't shaky from holding the camera. A quick tip is to make sure your image is level with the horizon line in your background. To do this, just adjust the angle of your tripod head by tilting her slightly until you see the horizon line in your background parallel with the top and bottom edges of your video. So let's try this. Nice. It's often good to have one of these types of microphones to isolate the sound on your subject. The reason you want to have one of these microphones plugged into your camera and mounted to it, a directional microphone, whereas the internal scratch track of your audio of your camera, once you've recorded all of your footage, it's time to import it into your computer to edit. You'll need a program such as Adobe Premiere Pro or Final Cut on a Mac to edit all your footage together.